Hello students, this is Dr. Stewart. I'm uh, recording this video to instruct you on Group Project 1. Uh, group Project 1 is inspired by the FIU bridge disaster. And, you know, that bridge disaster, while ongoing, uh, there hasn't been a, a final root cause analysis on what caused the failure. Uh, so we're going to try to do a bridge girder design um, and work from that perspective instead of the exact uh, failure of the FIU bridge. So, and our group project one is titled Bridge Girder Design. Uh, the description, you are a newly minted design engineer working with a bridge design firm. As a part of your training, you are instructed to design a girder for a new bridge project. You are given the vehicle load, weight per unit length, and the dimensions of the cross-section of the girder. You are asked to determine, for three materials, the maximum length of the girder that will maintain a safety factor of three. The safety factor, in this case, is calculated as follows, where the safety factor N is equal to the yield strength of the material divided by the von Mises stress. So in our report, uh, the structure uh, is as follows to, in order to, 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 to determine the maximum length. First, we must do what we always do, which is draw and properly label a free body diagram that describes our problem. Right? We want to include arrows indicating where our external forces are transmitted and how they're transmitted. Along with that free body diagram, we need to list the number of knowns and unknowns, but also list the names of those knowns and unknowns. And we want to assume that the external forces and moments are known and we're, we're given those, right? Once we've created our free body diagram and we've listed and labeled our knowns and unknowns, we then need to write the equations of equilibrium. That is the sum of the forces and sum of the moments equations uh, which will allow us to determine our support reactions. Uh, once we've done that part, then we need to draw the shear and bending moment diagrams for our beam. We need to see how the shear forces and bending moments evolve as we move along the beam. So we can find the distance, the, the, the location along the beam, where both the shear force and the bending moment are maximized, right? So find the location along the beam where the shear forces and bending moments are maximized. Once we've done that, then we need to identify or we need to select what do we believe are the critical locations along our cross-section. When we go and look at the actual shape of the cross-section of the girder, what are locations where we think stresses will be high? When we find those locations, then we need to calculate the state of stress at these critical locations and then calculate the von Mises stress from the state of stress. With that information, we can then identify where stress is highest. Basically, identify where von Mises stress is the highest of the critical locations that we've selected. And checking against that, with our safety factor equation. So once we've established this procedure, right, established this procedure of calculations, we can then go through the process of determining the optimal length of our beam, where the length is, you know, an input, and check safety for that length and optimize it until we find the length for three different materials, the different, the, the lengths for the three different materials that remain safe, right? So we've got a little bit of work on our hands. So a, a picture, an example of a, of a girder bridge or a bridge that uses girders is as follows. We can see that we have this bridge and under the bridge deck, which will be concrete, we have here five girders with an I-beam shape, right? And these girders are, are there to provide structural support to the road and, and to maintain that bridge. In our case, we just are going to be analyzing one girder. 
So now let's look at kind of the diagram and the schematic for our girder. Uh, we have an I-beam girder, so it has an I shape, right? And we're given the dimensions, H, which is the height, W, which is the width of the large span, and T, which is the thickness of our, of our components. And, um, and then we're also told some other information about our beam, that our beam is pin connected on one end, has a roller on another end. There, the, the beam has a weight, right? It weighs a certain amount. And we're saying that that weight is assumed to be a single concentrated force at the middle of the bridge. So we're simplifying this problem. And then the vehicle load that is applied to the bridge travels across the bridge. So it moves from zero, from the pin support, all the way to the roller, right? So it could be anywhere along the length of the bridge. So that's kind of the setup that we have here. And not the length of the bridge, but the length of the single girder, right? The beam dimensions are dimensions that we pulled from a standard I-beam, where the height is 382 millimeters, the width is 328 millimeters, the thickness is 32.6 millimeters, and the second moment of inertia about the x-axis, which is... From the neutral axis across is 100,510 centimeters uh, squared. Make sure that is right. I think that should be centimeters to the power four, uh, but I'm going to fix that. I think it should be centimeters to the power four, so we'll fix that. Uh, the vehicle load, so the load of the vehicles as they travel across the girder, is 100 kilonewtons. Ooh, okay, 100 kilonewtons. And then uh, what follows here is a table of the material properties. So we can see we have three materials, a titanium alloy, a steel that's hot rolled, and a wrought aluminum alloy. We're given the yield strengths, the unit weight, which is the uh, uh, weight per volume, and the cost per pound. And let's note that the material properties here are given in English units, but we want to do the math and we want to provide our answers in metric units. All right. So with all of this information we're provided, we can go through the process of our calculations, check for safety and optimize the length and find the three different girder lengths that are acceptable for titanium, for the steel and for the aluminum. Once we've found these optimal lengths, then we go into the extra credit part of this project. Everybody likes this part. So you have attained the optimal lengths for the three materials. It is time to make a final material selection. The bridge is to be 100 meters long. You need to determine how many girders are needed to make a, a 100 meter bridge made from each material. And you're going to round to a whole number. So for each of these three materials, how many girders are required? to make a 100 meter bridge, okay? Then, using our previous answer, we need to determine the cost for a 100 meter bridge made from each material. So we take the rounded up whole number, right? We're gonna round up to a whole number for each of these and we multiply by the cost. Uh, um, uh, and well, we've got to do a little bit of work here because we've got to go cost per pound and weight and so on, right? And then finally, once we've determined the cost for a 100-meter bridge for each material, then we need to determine which material is best for building the bridge. We need to make that determination. To receive the extra credit, you must show your math. We need to see these numbers, right? How did you get these numbers? Was the math? To receive credit, the optimal lengths which you start with, the number of girders which you calculate, and the cost that you calculate must be calculated correctly. So make sure before you try to work on this extra credit that you, it, that you get those optimal lengths correct first, right? Okay. So uh, finally, let's get into the report part so we have an understanding of what our report is. The report will consist of the mathematical solution to the project. The solution must be well organized and easy to follow. Titles for each section of the solution and a description of the results 
for each section must be included. What does this mean? I want your mathematical solution, right? I want to see your calculations and how you made them, right? I expect that the different groups will come up with different approaches to solving the problems. I expect that. No two groups will have the same approach, right? Because everyone, every group is a unique group, and you can take unique approaches to trying to get to those final answers. Do not make a cover page for your report. I do not want to read a blank page, right? Instead, at the top of the first page of your solutions, provide the team and member names. So all you have to do is put your names at the top and then go right into the calculations. I highly recommend that you take advantage of symbolic solving softwares such as MathCAD, Mathematica, MATLAB, and even Excel to solve your projects. But, you know, Excel, I don't really like Excel. You can't see the equation, so then you have to type the equation separately. But, but the good ones, MathCAD, Mathematica, and MATLAB, please try to use those. These softwares allow you to program the equations such that you only need to change the input variables to recalculate the entire project. That means instead of going through five or six pages of solutions just to find one optimal length and then going through another five to six pages of solutions to find the next optimal length, you can program it into these softwares and just change the inputs, right? Change the material properties and such in order to find that optimal length for the three different materials. It's much, much more efficient. Uh, this can make it much easier to manually optimize your design, right? If you want to manually change the length and find which meets safety. In addition, it is possible to program a numerical solution to your problem where the computer software, right, where the software automatically determines your best solution, right? So use your skills from analysis, from analysis one and analysis two, you can write a numerical solution. You can let the computer optimize and find those lengths for you versus manually trying to find them. I also encourage you to use tools such as Autodesk Force Effects, SolidWorks, NX, ANSYS, Abacus, etc., to try to verify your solution, right? You have the extra time and you're worried about your numbers or something like that. You can try to go and use these tools and it's just compare, see how close your answer is, right? It's completely optional, right? And then also I want to remind you that late ex assignments will not be accepted, right? If you work for a design company and they tell you they need a design by a certain day and you don't have a design done, you haven't even started on the design, you will be fired from that company, right? So let's make sure that we start working on this project early, that you do the due diligence so that you can do well on it. Now, the important dates for this project, we're introducing this project to you on 4-9-2018, which is tomorrow, and the project report will be due and submitted to Blackboard by 4-30-2018, right? So that is approximately, that is one, two, three weeks uh, plus one day from today, right? So you should have plenty of time to work on this, but it is a challenging project. It's going to take those three weeks, so definitely get started early. I'd like to remind everyone that the reuse of material from a previous class and the copying of material from the internet is considered cheating, right? Also, the sharing of materials between groups from one group to another, that is considered collusion, which is a form of of cheating. Do not share your materials. Do not try to use some weird materials or do something weird. If you think that it might be dishonest or immoral, it is dishonest and immoral. Students caught doing this will be referred to the Office of Student Conduct and Conflict Resolution, and I will recommend expulsion from the university. So let's be honest. Let's be ethical engineers, and let's try to design this bridge so that it will be successful, so that it will be safe for people to use. All right? So 
make sure that you get started. Uh, I believe that I've answered most of your questions. And as you proceed to solve this project, questions are going to arise. Communicate with your teammates. Try to think through. Think like an engineer and make decisions and make determinations for yourselves. Okay? And uh, hopefully by the end of this, you will have those optimal designs. All right? So uh, that's it.